Okay. Yeah, so welcome to Team Cookbook today. Siri and I get to be um, the sous chef. You get to just, right, be here if needed, but we're really excited uh, to have our operations. So I'll introduce Jill and you want to introduce Keely and we'll talk uh, today. We're going to go in deep and we're they have a lot planned. So we'll just kind of let them get going and maybe have more conversation time at the end, I think would be a good plan. Um, so Jill, it, Jill Becker is her title. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Our guest chef. <laughs> Did it go back? Go back. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do the slides. Like, okay. Yeah. So today, again, like we talked about uh, last week or last time we will do a hot, I can do it quick is uh, we just talked about Siri and I, uh, how we decided to do compensation plans, how it's changed, how it's evolved. Uh, really, it's going to build into next month, which is going to talk about, uh, Siri's going to talk about like the value, right, that you bring to your people. And then that kind of goes into the, your compensation. Today, like I said, we want to invite our operations people and then they're part of every call, but specifically, they're going to be the stars of this one. And we're going to talk about all the essential systems and processes that are needed to track compensation, make sure agents are getting paid, make sure the team is getting paid. Um, and then we'll do Q&A and then we'll tell you about, I kind of briefly did it, but we'll remind you about the next session. All right. So then today our guest chefs and I will talk about Jill. And then, um, so Jill Becker is our, uh, she likes to still call herself director of operations, which she, she is. Um, a lot of her job, and I think both these ladies is really doing finance. Like if you get big enough, it just becomes pretty much like a borderline full-time job, <laughs> right? To like track all of the money and also HR, people coming in, people leaving, agents. I know Jess, you probably experienced this, right? When you've got onboarding, offboarding, and it's not as simple uh, once you get integrated into all these systems. So Jill's been with me for... Uh, since I was eight years old, no, <laughs> we started our first business together when uh, we were eight, we played store and no, it's been like a lifetime, but I'm really excited to have her. She's been in appraising in mortgage and in real estate for 20, I don't know. And even like accounting with Mayo Clinic numbers for years in systems and tracking things. So I'm um, super excited to have her. She's a huge resource for a lot of agents uh, in and outside the team and just really knows as she's gone through, uh, maybe same with Keely, being a transaction coordinator to uh, appraiser to mortgage originator, all these hats, it's amazing her knowledge. So we're excited to have her today. And I think um, I'm up here and we've got Keely here. Keely's in the red. It's a pretty color on you, Keely. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, it sounds like Keely and Jill are really very similar in, um, in what they do in their backgrounds. And it's interesting because Keely also has a background in HR and um, how that rolls over into so many things, operations. And I think the director of operations role can be so like almost like you don't realize how many hats they actually wear. Like you said, it's like they are, they are handling HR, they're handling our lenders, they're handling, um, they're getting on with the P&L, they're handling, handling our vendors. Um, they're handling me. <laughs> I mean, there's just like, <laughs> there's so many, they're, they're like all encompassing um, people that really just run the whole machine from the top down. And, and so what's exciting is, um, so Keely just, Keely's gonna, uh, Keely's been with me for a few years now as well. And she started out as um, a TC on the team, if anybody's kind of heard the story and we always kind of laugh because she, she didn't do that very well. I wouldn't say that she didn't do it awful though. The thing is, is she just wasn't happy there. And so she had actually reached out to me and said, hey, you know what, I would like to, I see myself in this position. And so it's really been fun to watch Keely grow and grow and grow and all the things and just even learning how to do zaps and right like cognito forms and just really like knowing that stuff that like I don't have to do that stuff anymore at all, which is great. And so um, I'm really excited to have these two ladies on and you guys what we really want to make sure is that you guys have tangibles like they're going to be showing you some of our back end stuff they're going to be talking about it they're going to be talking 
about the evolution of, of things and um, really just like what is behind what is behind the hood of these teams and and these girls know it they know it and so um, just really excited for this one today so you guys take notes it's going to be recorded go back if you need anything um, and let's get going awesome thank you see you yeah. All right. So um, like Beth mentioned, we're going to kind of dive a little bit deeper into the comp structures that we started talking about last week. Um, these are some of the main points that we think any team should consider when they are considering a compensation structure for agents. Um, finding that win-win balance is really important. You obviously want your agents to be happy, motivated, feel well compensated for the work that they're putting in. And you also want them to understand that the supports that they're getting from the team also need to be paid for from um, those commissions. So finding that win-win balance where the agents understand and operations understands um, where that where that split needs to be. Um, do your research on comparable teams. There are a lot of teams that have completely different structures. And it's important that you look at what supports they provide, what market they're in. Um, so really understand that it's not going to be apples to apples all the time. So look for comparable teams that you can talk to about what their structure is like. Um, know your operating costs. That's a really, really big one. You need to make sure that you're your splits are going to cover your operating costs um, and you know, ideally exceed them. Um, consider differences between buyers and sellers. I know Jill showed me a really cool setup that they have on their listing side um, where they have different splits. And she she did a lot of research on the back end to find out how much a listing costs on average. And that's how they structured that. Jill, do you want to add to that? Um, yeah, yeah, so we do have like a little bit of a different comp structure for our listings um, where the team gets an additional percentage to compensate for what we're offering for our sellers. And then we have, it's kind of two parts. One is, um, you know, the additional that covers the basics, the sign. So as our clients are able to select what percentage they would like and what services they would like with that and yeah it was just kind of a lot of work of far figuring out like what do photos cost what is staging cost what is a home inspection cost what is cleaning cost what can we offer at different um commission rates and still you know come out with profit and being able to cover those so it was yeah. a lot of work but it was yeah fun i love what y'all did and i can't wait for us to explore maybe implementing that as well um team yeah, if we were saying that could be like a whole nother class mm -hmm. it <laughs> could be i want to learn everything you do with that it's really cool um team versus soi obviously that's different because there are often referral fees with team uh, generated leads um understand the tracking and auditing complexities of a comp structure so commission structures can be you know they can go from across the board pretty simple everyone's got one or two options to extremely complex and um all of them are good it's just making sure that you know how to track and audit them so that you can stick to that plan that you've implemented um doing a data deep dive to be able to project what your commission structure for your team is um going to bring in i think we did we did a pretty deep dive when we restructured our entire commission plan um as it was implemented one one and we went through and we um i did a spreadsheet where i pulled all of our past deals and i ran uh, numbers for three different scenarios so that we could see had um had we had this plan in place last year this is what the team outcome would have been these are the agents that would have made less and so we were able to find a win-win that way by being able to compare all of those numbers um, getting agent buy-in is huge. We have an agent advisory committee that we run all of our changes by before we implement them. Um, that gives them an opportunity to give us feedback. They've been nominated by the rest of the agents, so um, they their voice matters and we want to hear their feedback. Um, and then once, once they have buy-in, they're also able to kind of champion those changes. Um, intentional implementation, which can also goes to the agent buy, and you want to make sure that when you're implementing a new compensation structure that um, you are doing it intentionally and you're able to explain why and um, give agents enough time to digest it and also buy into it.
All right, some of the essential systems that we use here at the brand um, for commission-related tracking is uh, Cognito Forms. We use Cognito Forms for a couple stages throughout a transaction. Um, and we'll, I'll go into that further in a little bit. And then we use CSU for our accounting and um, transaction management. Follow-up boss is our CRM. All of our data from Cognito Forms goes to CSU and to follow-up boss. Um, and then we also have a Monday.com board for um, tracking agent commission, um, which just shows you know what what program they're in. And then Google Sheets we use um, to track all of the different team source fee um, fee structures. So like you know all of Zillow's complex referral fees, uh, we have that all tracked in there. And then resin that we use for real to generate CDAs. Thank you. Muted, Jill. Oh, thank you. So on the Enclave team, we I thought it was pretty interesting when Keely and I were talking that we use a few different systems, but they all serve the same purposes. So I think for comp structure or for comp planning and tracking and everything, um, you know, there's options out there, but it was kind of the same flow. So we use um, open to close, which mainly our transaction coordinators use. Um, I'm going to kind of get into a little bit more, but we start with that. Um, we use CTE, which is similar to CSU, and it is an accounting tracking. And then we use follow-up boss along with that, checking lead sources, stages, um, like how, how old the lead is, various things with that. And then um, I use a Google Sheet, and that is just internal for our um, transaction coordinators for them to reference the comp structure and plans and then reason as well. All right, so with those systems, there's obviously processes tied to each of them. And um, for us, we do have a pending form that's similar to the intake form that Joe will tell you about where when an escrow opens, an agent will fill out a pending form. That gives us the basic information on the commission side. Mainly submitting that is to get the details of the contract in so that our TCs can compare the data um, for all the information and make sure that it's accurate. Um, but the pending form has basics and we put that in there so that we have those numbers in CSU for projecting. That way we're able to see what we have under contract, approximately how much income will be coming in from that. Um, but then seven days before closing, we ask agents to fill out a pre-closing form. And I'll show you a little snip of that in another slide. But uh, the pre-closing form gathers a lot more information on the actual transaction um, on the finance side. And then um, the TC reviews and verifies all of that information based off of what they know from the file, having TC'd it for the entire escrow. And then um, they verify the um, details in the Monday commission board to make sure that what the agent selected in there is what uh, is assigned to them. Um, they also enter all of the details at that point into resin and update the details in CSU. And then they send a CDA out um, via DocuSign. I sign every single CDA. Um, it helps with checks and balances. So we have the agents, if there's an ISA or if there's a mentor, anyone getting paid out on a CDA um, gets it via DocuSign to initial. Um, and then once payment is received, our um, one of our TCs reconciles it and um, does um, you know batches into um, into the bank, and then we'll make sure that everything matches. Um, and then monthly, we do a deeper audit with our PNL, where we go through all of the revenue and make sure that everything aligns up with our accountant. And so our um, process is also very similar, and I think it's just. Like Keely said, it's a lot of checks and balances throughout with the different people who are entering the information um, and matching with what the agents are um, inputting in the beginning. So our agents submit an intake form using open to close, um, and they're going to be the first ones that let us know what their split is. Um, our comp plan structure does change. So throughout the year, if they have a certain amount of transactions, number or volume, their, tra um, their comp plan might change. Um, and so we kind of start with the agents telling us 
what the splits are, who is involved in the transaction, um, if there's any other agents that they were working with on the team that need to get paid as well. Um, our intake specialist then will review and verify the information that was submitted to open to close, and they're going to just kind of check against follow-up boss for lead sources and um, what the, you know, type of, sometimes there can be a little, I guess, like maybe a lead source wasn't updated or wasn't changed to past clients. So they're just going to kind of double check to make sure everything is correct. And they're also going to look at the agent comp structure, where they're at, um, and then they're going to enter kind of splits into CTE and CTE is going to automatically calculate this out. And then they're also entered into reason. And then they do three days before closing, they're going to go back into CTE and reason and make sure everything is accurate and nothing has changed throughout the transaction or any of the fees that are paid to real have shifted due to other closings. And then once um, I received the email that the amount that is being paid out, I'm going to go back in and reconcile with CTE at that amount and make sure that we match. So this is um, the Google Sheet that I referenced. This is what um, I was created just for our transaction coordinators. So it's internal just for our transaction coordinators. Um, but basically on the left, we basically have a list of all of our agents. Uh, we have their anniversary date, and what comp structure plan they're on. If there's anything additional, sometimes we have a couple of people who are doing additional work with our Zillow Flex program that might be getting paid a bit additional on those Zillow Flex deals then. So that is noted here. And, um, and then I also just have kind of color coded, like over here, I blocked out our agent's names, but over here is where you have the agent's name and kind of then you can see which uh, comp plan structure that they are currently on. Um, throughout the year, this does need to get updated. So usually the first two months of the year um, doesn't require too much updating, but about March is when we're going to start checking to see if anyone has crossed over a volume threshold or a um, number team number sale transaction number that then would put them in a different split category. Also checking, we have a different split sometimes for sphere versus a team generated lead. Before you move on, I'm just going to say this sounds like if you look at this, it looks pretty crazy. Uh, I think that this is where like Siri was saying, where they have to put up with us. And when I first started in real estate, I was um, an admin and then I became kind of like a buyer's agent. And so one of the things that always was difficult for me and I have always kept near and dear to my heart is like understanding both sides. Like we're running a business. We deserve to obviously cover our costs and it, we want to make a profit, right? We don't do this for fun. It's not a hobby. It's a business, uh, but also to give as much back to the agents as possible. So it has gotten more and more complex over time. And this is like, I'm the type of way we're trying to find like, not like, like pennies, right? But all these small amounts add up. It adds up for the agents. It adds up to us. And then the first year, People take so much time and effort in training and questions that we do. That's probably when we take the most. And I think it's warranted. Uh, but after that, as someone gets more experienced and as I've had team members that are with me for over 10 years, this is a product of trying to continue to give them the, the money back. They take less management. They're less stressed on the system. Um, if they're doing more sphere deals and, and just trying to keep everybody fairly compensated. So it, it is wild. And that's why I'm super excited, hopefully with reason and pro teams that we can do some of this internally because it's just wicked. And then also it's just a way as a business owner to protect as people have come alongside me and step into leadership to be able to give them more money instead of paying salaries, which can be completely detrimental to a team if the market shifts and you can just go under, right? So this is something that was a way to, uh, it's very complex, but it, it's it's worked, but it didn't look like this at one point, but <laughs> you start realizing, oh my gosh, I'm losing money in Zillow or oh my goodness, this isn't working or we're not covering here. And that's kind of where all this was born out of to get crazy <laughs> questions from agents right agents that are like how come we have to pay this when you don't have to pay that like they're smart they get those phone calls those sales calls they know what the referral fees are etc and not that you're not trying to pull one over on them but just to really fairly take into consideration what's being paid out to partners versus what the team's getting versus what they're getting and make sure that it's all spread equally serious pretty crazy right <laughs> yeah we just uh, we updated yeah. our we updated our comp plan 
fourth quarter of last year, and then this will be the first year on this new one. Um, like Keely said, we ran a bunch of different scenarios to making sure that we can cover the costs of the business. And then also for the agent buy-in, we actually presented three options to them mm -hmm. and went through each option, let them um, kind of look and see, and then we let them all vote. And the majority vote was the plan that we went with. That's and it was overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So kind of like our agent advisory too, because mm -hmm. um, we try to take a look at every year, you know, what's our flow going to be. I, I will say in the last probably two years, we were, our theme really has been to simplify, simplify, simplify. Because what happens is we start putting band-aids on everything. And then all of a sudden we're sitting there going, what in the world did we just build? Let's tear it all down. And so um, I know, Keely, you'll go into ours because, um, and, you know, this is just kind of where we've landed now, but we have really come from a place of simplification because if I can't remember it, they can't remember it either. I guarantee it. That doesn't mean it's going to stay that way either. You know, it does like, not. <laughs> all things. So we'll see. Our, our projections may have been off and we'll have to continue right. and look at what we've designed. Is it sustainable for our operations team to track? And is it sustainable for the business profitability wise? Are the agents happy? It's, it's ever evolving, I think. It is Always. because you can yeah. make changes and you don't realize like you can do math, but it's kind of crazy. Like when we went to that 70, 30 for a sphere after covering costs, like that was a huge hit. Like you really felt it like the year that we did it. So it, I hear what you're saying, Keely, like it is trying to always right yeah. maximize what the agent gets and what the business gets. It's, it's a ever evolving I think it's market driven too. I mean, obviously our, our, our numbers here are higher, you know, our sales price is yep. higher and stuff yep. too. So, yep. you know, it's, 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 it's um, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's territorial with how you set these things up. There's no one size fits all. So that's, what's cool about getting on and sharing like this and just seeing what people are doing. What's your average, what's your average price point there? Like in the twin city in, in Minneapolis, St. Paul, ours is probably like yeah. it depends between 340, 350, and then um 325 in the south part of Minnesota. So a lot less, yeah. right? What's yours? Yeah, we're like eight to a million and some yeah. our Riverside County is slightly lower, but mm -hmm. I mean big difference, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm moving into you, Beth. What'd you say? I'm moving over there. <laughs> it's a, it's a, yeah, it's, you know, as long as you can, I mean, yesterday was 70 and today is uh, 10. I mean, whatever, I was like, on the ground, like, you know. I can wear a jacket. That's fine. Yeah, you can. That's what I would say. It's like easy prairie living. Like you get these like great houses and like easy, like clean air, like, you know, it's safe, like whatever. I love it. <laughs> Got to get out of here. That's all. <laughs> Well, fun. All right, what's next? Next. Slide. So yeah, I was just gonna. I'll go back. I'm. I'm just when you're talking about the comp plans, like yeah, when you were talking about complexity, it's definitely something to think about because this does require a lot of tracking. Because there's components versus like anniversary year when they're like a first year to like a you know year two on the team, and then um you know when they're crossing over various thresholds. So it does require some, and then along with that, like you might fill out a CDA based on them crossing over a threshold, but then a, a sale falls through earlier and then you kind of have to go back and realize, like, okay, that sale didn't happen. So now this one changes. So it does require a lot of tracking. So that's just something to think about when you are building and planning one. Okay, you can go to the next one. So this is our open to close intake form. And so this is one that the agents fill out. They're putting in the basic information about the transaction and they can go ahead and upload all their documents to this into the system. And it's going to notify our intake specialist that this new sale has been churned in. Um, when they're going in and putting this in, they're going to put in the splits. What percentage um, as the original agent, that's like the lead agent. If there is another agent that they're working with, maybe they split it or have somebody else that they're paying that watched their business while they're on vacation, whatever the situation, they can input all of that information into here. And this is kind of our starting point of what the splits should be. And then from here, we just go through our other systems kind of doing checks and balances, making sure, you know, we have sometimes agents have put in a lead source as Zillow, but it actually, you know, was a past client because they bought with Zillow maybe five years ago, but they've now bought with them a couple of times. So it's just checks and balances on some of those things where maybe 
something switched. And so this is kind of our starting kickoff point. And just to say, I, I think uh, it started with an email. And I don't know, Keely, you're going to go into that, but some of this stuff, like Keely, they got, those guys have a system too, like a form. You can do a form, but just, it did start. We It's always just trying to make it easier, right? Because we do an email, they don't give all the information. They don't save the template. Everything is always around, how can we like dummy proof this? They make it super simple, like, right, so. Yeah, we'd much yeah. rather have agents out focusing on our clients than trying to navigate all of our processes, <laughs> which is still a lot of work. So um, we use CTE for uh, the commission tracking, and this is basically, this is just one screenshot of one of the pages, uh, but it is pretty crazy system. It's reasonable if it's something you're interested in. I did throw in kind of their hyperlink here to their information about it, because I know a lot of people haven't heard of it. It's not as popular as CSU, but it basically is very similar. Reasonable, um, like 350 bucks a year, right? Like for yeah, for I think it's like 420 or 450, but very, very cheap for what they do. They will customize this for you. There's multiple tabs and spreadsheets. So agents also can have access to like an agent portal view where it gives just their numbers and their information they can put in, track like um, you know, appointment set, met, signed, all of those metrics as well into here. And then they can see their commissions. And so our intake specialist uses this. You put in the basic information that it's uh, listing agent, the seller's name, um, address, what the sale price is. If there's any additional fees that are being collected, we can enter those in here. Any fees being paid out, if you're paying like a transaction coordinating fee, all of it can be configured and they will kind of add and uh, CTE will make these columns for you and so to kind of fit your business too. So that's one thing that's kind of cool about this one. Um, I was able to tell them exactly what we needed. So when you put in the dollar amounts, it's going to, like you can put in if there um, is Zillow Flex being paid, um, and then you put in your primary agent and put in the percent they're getting, and it's going to automatically calculate how much the team is getting, what the primary agent is. If there's a second, third, fourth agent, you can put that percentage just for each one, and it's just going to automatically calculate it out. And then we also put in the real fees here so that it shows all of that. And at the, you don't see it here, but at the end, it gives the total that the team is receiving. And so... This is the one that I do go back to once uh, we get paid and I reconcile and make sure that we match. And it is usually always to the penny. Every once in a while, there's like a penny off because of um, maybe some rounding, but it is super accurate. So it gives a really good screenshot and accurate view of everything. I and we, did, we had this, went to CSU and went back to this. I mean, not that, and there's not, CSU obviously is like pretty, it's user-friendly and sometimes it's just cost savings and this is watch may, way more, more than we need and more heady. Like I'm not a spreadsheet person. I have to like, I'm like rudimentary in there, but uh, it's been great. And we've just had like no glitches. And it's like, if you, I don't know, took a master's class in Excel and built out the most crazy real estate spreadsheets. And like Jill said, it was customizable, which was important to us. Yeah. yeah. And they build it for you. So all the formulas, everything's in there. If a lot of them are like protected by, you know, cell protected. But if, you know, it accidentally does happen every once in a while where somebody deletes a formula, you email them, they immediately like will fix it for us. And so, um, but yeah, it's basically like a super crazy complex, multiple tab uh, spreadsheet system. You just answered my question. I was going to ask if they have good customer service because I would need help for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They do. I mean, it's usually like a, I email two people and they respond usually within, you know, a couple hours and fix stuff within less than 24 hours usually. That's great. Yeah, I look at this stuff and my eyes roll back too. I'm like, what is this? I know I kind of hit my point. I'm like, let's just talk now, right? No. <laughs> I do want to say, I was going to say, ladies, I know we have to end early today. I think there's someone coming yeah. on, right? Like three minutes before, but anyways, you've yeah. got um, maybe uh, eight minutes and I will zip it. Awesome. <laughs> Speed through ours. Um, our compensation structure, like we said, we redid it January one um, implementation and it's much more simplified than we used to have it. So um, these are how our splits work. It's based off of production for elite. So um, 
agents can earn a 90-10 split on their SOI if they close 18 deals uh, in a calendar year. And then they will, if they earn that mid-calendar year, they'll get that split the rest of the year and the following year. So our elite team is um, pretty small right now, but we're definitely hoping it grows and we get more production this year. Um, traditional is where most of our agents sit, and that is 80-20 um, for SOI, 50-50 for team. Um, independent is kind of separate where they do not have access to our team generated leads, but they do, um, they pay a tech fee for um, however many months up until they close their first two in a year. So the tech fee helps cover all of the costs that um, would be covered if they were producing at a higher level uh, with team leads. We'll go to the next slide. So to track where agents are at, we have a Monday board for this. So um, we have it broken out by you know elite, independent, and our traditional agents. Um, and then we have all of the details of what their caps are in there. Um, if they have a mentor agreement, which is negotiated between them and their chosen mentor, um, the mentor agreement goes in there, which will show what the mentor split is. So any little nuances or details related to commission is in here. And this is one of the places TCs will go to double check um, that the, the pre-closing form that came in had accurate information on it for processing. Can go to the next one. This is our pre-closing Cognito form. So um, this helps us make sure that we have the GCI and the split accurate. Um, if there's a co-agent, what the lead source is, which like Jill, we also go back into follow-up boss and we track where that lead came from and we make sure that the source is accurate. Um, and we have um, who pays our transaction fee. We have a transaction fee for the team for each deal. And um, for the most part, clients pay for that fee for, it's called Doc Archive. Um, we create a really fancy folder for all of them with um, a digital folder that they can access anything from their transaction um, forever. Um, then we also check um, any concessions. So if agents uh, decided that they wanted to pay for um, a better home warranty, um, then we need to make sure that that's noted in there. And that those are some of the things that might not get um, picked up um, or noticed throughout the transaction. So it's really important to check that, oh, the agent negotiated something after the um, request for repairs and they're actually contributing. So now we need to adjust our numbers. Um, also, we verify the broker cap and then um, the preferred payment method where they want their check sent. And then um, other potential fees for us, we have an inside sales team and the agents pay 3% if the inside sales uh, agent on our team was the one that um, converted that client, got an appointment set and helped nurture the client um, up until point of going under contract. We also, I mentioned the mentor fees, which varies, they negotiate that between themselves. Um, and then showing agent fee, if, if one of our agents on the team does a showing for another agent on the team and that property goes under contract um, and closes, then it's a $250 fee um, that the primary agent pays to the showing agent through the CDA. And then um, referral fees, which always vary as well. Our firm also has another section on it for ordering closing gifts. We have three closing gift options of local businesses we've partnered with and I've built into the form an order form so agents can order what they want. And a lot of them are like personalized little like stone etching and stuff so they can put all the details in there and it goes straight to the vendor. Oh, that's that. <laughs> Woo -hoo! And there we are, and there we are. <laughs> okay, so wow. we have questions for these ladies. <laughs> No, I said like I have a question. I'm just not sure how to ask my question. We start talking, <laughs> we'll figure it out. Yeah. All right, perfect. Yeah. Okay, so it, I'm kind of wondering, like, when, uh, like, with all of this, what was the point of, um, I guess, more like in the beginning? Because, like, I'm on a smaller team, but it's in like the building phase. So, kind of like, uh, as you started building these systems, is it like, oh, now we have to hire a TC? Or like, what was? Is this becoming a question? I'm not sure. 
You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I think like part of it. So what you're seeing is that kind of leverage, like part might be systems. And when it started to become more of like these big processes versus an email and a spreadsheet or whatever you're doing, would that be right? Yeah. And one might be like, was it like one person? People. Like when do you start yeah. getting like a second person, a third person, right? Right. Yes. Was it one person that you'd say like figured out the like, all right, I feel good about this system. Now I know I can bring on another person. Jill, Keely, you guys want to answer what you're from right. your perspective and then maybe. A... Yeah, I think from my perspective, it's just constantly evolving. So you see what your needs are. You see holes like my, like for my position, it didn't exist. I saw a need for it when I was attempting to be a TC and I was like, <laughs> hey, you need this role. Let me help take some of this off of your plate and let's turn this into a monster. And so it, that kind of naturally evolved. And I think there have, I guess, when we got to a point when the TC we had was you know, processing 30, 40 transactions herself in, in California, that's a lot in a month because there's so much paperwork in California, uh, <laughs> needed to look for a new TC. So it's kind of an evolving as you see needs. And then you're also constantly updating your systems to accommodate Nice. I would say it's the same for us, like constantly evaluating where we are, where somebody, maybe somebody's role is at kind of a capacity. We brought in an intake specialist who kind of did the front end of the sale, um, you know, going through reviewing all the documents that the agents were sending in and going through that intake form and doing the checks and balances. And then at closing, they do the back end. So they're just kind of the, you know, day one and closing day is their job. Um, and that kind of evolved from our transaction coordinators being at capacity, talking with them, like we're, you know, do we bring on another transaction coordinator and split it out or where is their time being taken up the most and what could we maybe fill in? So we do a lot of that, I think with right now, even right now, we're kind of at the point where we know we need somebody, sometimes jobs shift between each people. And I think we're really clear when hiring that like, we're growing, we're in a growth mode. So, you know, sometimes what you start with, there's opportunities to grow into another role or take on another position as we get bigger. So I think, yeah, right now we're kind of exploring that. It's just kind of like when you hit your max in like whatever your hours are, I work 40, I work 50, I don't know, but most people employees, it's like 40 hour a week, work week. Um, then it's kind of like when they can't get stuff done and we start seeing bottlenecks when we start seeing things not happening and, and you've got to adjust for seasonality, right? Meaning like there's a lot that goes in, but it's kind of, so if you're one person like you, Jess, and it's like, then who would you bring on? What, what part of the job are you the best at? What, what part requires the highest experience and skill level? Um, is it a VA? And then like Jill and Keely were saying, it's just a constant like break off, break off, break off, break off. And it started with one person doing a lot and then two, and then four, and it becomes more specialized, I think, where when it gets bigger, you do have someone who like does intake. Well, that's like 500 transactions, right? I mean, when it's like a hundred, it might be still like a coordinator. And then who does, what does the other person do? Listings, it's it really marketing, it, it's team specific. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yes. That was, that was very helpful. Thank you. So to start, what we do is we always like, even if you take a spreadsheet and you're like, okay, Jess, this is everything I do. Like you list everything out and then it's really easy to like highlight and break it off, like cut and paste and be like, okay, what would I like get rid of? What would, and you all of a sudden you're like, holy cow, no wonder why I'm not succeeding because it's like a whole nother job. That's what happens. We thought we had like one time just recently, we thought we had a, a job and we, when we split it all out, we're like, oh my gosh, that's like two people. And no wonder why we can't get anything done. Right. Cause it's like impossible. Like it just really shows you. And obviously revenue has to be there, but when you're growing, that's part of like the team leader too, is making an investment in the business and the growth and Right. Was it different like seasonality in. at all wise? Like where it's like winter time, there's the potential for like, oh, it's a little slower. And then you could be like, oh, I guess I have the capacity. And then one weekend and you're like, oh, and now we're back, back at it. Slow season is a great season to do projects. So That's like, what I was just going to say. That's yeah, we, we, we go deep on we go deep on improving the systems and the processes during the seasonality. So there's always something that you can find. Um, to make things better when it's slow. And then you need to account for when it's, you know, financially coming in stronger. You have to like, obviously be smart with your money and know that it's going to be used, you know, maybe somewhere else during those times. So you have to spread all of that out. Yeah. 
We love our projects, don't we, Kaylee? <laughs> our improvement projects, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what else? I mean, I think too, like, I think sometimes, you know, and I, and, and again, we kind of have diff different people at different levels that come on and watch this. And then some people, you know, watch this later and then they'll ask questions directly. They'll come to me directly with some questions following the recording and stuff. Um, what I'm finding typically is we get a lot of um, kind of like yourself, Jess, is, you know, agents that are just kind of getting started or have a smaller team. So I think some of our stuff can be overwhelming at times. Um, but the, the goal of all of this is to really, like, elevate you guys that it's all possible. And what you see was based on where you were. And then we just added different ingredients. I, I use the word Beth different ingredients to build all this stuff. Yeah. And it's, it's been a slow crawl of like, Oh, there's a need. Let's try this. Hey, there's a need. Let's try this. So let's put this person there. Um, <clears throat> for some of you that may maybe watch this back and you're going to be maybe closer to our level and you'll go, Oh, I'm so curious at what you guys are doing back there. And, you know, we're always happy to help you guys too. The girls jump on. I think you guys jumped on this week with another team. Um, I can't remember where he was at, but jumped on and did a, you know, a one-on-one -on -one with him and went over some stuff, which was really cool. Yeah. We're putting that out there. And I would say along with that series, like a lot of our processes that I showed you today were a very simpler version to start with. So like Beth mentioned, the churn in form wasn't an intake form through open to close. It was an email template where agents just sent an email and uploaded the documents to that and kind of filled out the same information, but just in an email. Um, prior to using CTE or CSU, we used a Google spreadsheet to track sales. Um, and then, yeah, so started in one area and have grown. I think what you, mm -hmm. what Jill said yesterday was really amazing to me is like, even if you're using different software, different systems, we're, we're doing the same thing, like, right? Like the, there's the there's the check and balance or reconciliation, there's the accounting, there's a transaction management. So it, whether it's a, a Google sheet, a Google form, a checklist, like a simple like file checklist, that's what it used to be. Back in the day, it was like, right? It's like piece of paper on a file and you just like checked it off. That was kind of fun. It was more rewarding. But um, I think that we why we wanted to show you this too is, we learn so much in where to go. And what I think is really cool, and I always say this, is like I had four assistants for me. And yes, I was, you know, because there was no organization, no system, no process, no anything. So we essentially have like four people for like 500. And so just that's where, how do you maintain profitability is because you have to have automations, tech, right? To make it faster, to streamline it so that you're not hiring people constantly in state because you would go broke. It just is impossible. Um, so that's where it's really cool that it starts, all your simple processes can get turned into something more complex down the road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All you guys have said a few times, like uh, it wasn't like this. It didn't start like this. How many, was that years ago? Like how, how long ago was that? For me, it was, um, gosh, about, Five, six years ago. I know, Beth, you've been at it longer than me. I was, yeah, five, I six was years for me. Five, six years with all the tech is when it's really changed, though. I think that yeah. even if I started a team in 2010, it was still pretty archaic. I mean, basic, right? I mean, that it's just very different today. It's easier. Yeah. What you guys are saying. Good, good, good. good. Yeah, you're not, yeah, yeah, see, you're normal. It's all good. This is normal growth. <laughs> That's what's awesome. So the, the thing that I always say is, like, we make it look easy. We have this talent of making everything look easy. And um, what what we don't show, like if anybody's following us on social, if you're not, you should, but like you'll see our stuff and it just looks like, oh, they're out like having vacations and they're out having a good time and their team's doing this stuff and all this stuff. And yeah, we are doing that stuff. But the thing is, is like, we've had long weekends. We still have long weekends. Um, we put in a lot of hours. We're waking up. I know Beth, you probably do this now and then too at two, three in the morning with some ideas, you know, like, oh, we got to do this. We got to make this happen. It's just this like crazy nonstop obsession. And obviously nobody knows that all that stuff's going on. So again, this is like a, a snippet of the things that have been built based on a lot of time and effort and, 
and we're we're still here. So if we're still here, you guys you guys can make it happen too. And you yeah. can imagine things just get faster and faster. Like I remember, like just to go back to Joss, like it was just one person, right? And then now mm-hmm. when it, it blows my mind when you want to roll something out and you have an action plan or something and you get everybody on board and you got like five people, like how fast something can come to life. And that just happens mm-hmm. over time. So you are in like, I mean, there's seasons, right? Where it's really tough. And then there's seasons where it's easy and then it gets really tough again <laughs> in growth. I know. It's a, spot it's a roller like, coaster. Everything's great. Yeah. And then, you know, when that happens, boom, something's about to just like blow up and need to completely shift and change. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, do you guys have any other like, like questions that we can go over right now? Like who else, what, what else are you guys thinking, pondering? What can we discuss? Talk yeah. about help. Where are some stuck, where are some, some things that maybe you're stuck on around this topic that, that we can help. I see the brain spinning, just unmute and think of something. Or and there's no in. dumb question. Like I love when people <laughs> ask like, the most simple like Jess that wasn't even that was actually really great yeah question. it was great so, mm-hmm. seriously it was very red during the process I, I feel like I'm asking all the questions I have one but if anybody else has oh one. ask it while someone's thinking yeah okay, okay. Uh, the uh t so like a tc checklist um so like there you guys have a tc did they have their own full like evolved checklist that they follow do they use a certain platform <laughs> Keely remember those days <laughs> We use CC, um, right now transaction management. We're we're exploring open to close as well, which I think is what Jill said they've transitioned to. But within there, we have very complex checklists for different you know, scenarios and types of transactions. And then we have automation set up with everything we do. So, um, you know, if the transaction is a 20 day escrow, then we're going to have some notifications that go out five days before closing instead of 10 days before closing. And so, um, yeah, we have checklists, but it's also, it's, it's all digital. So, so Jess, just to go back to your, where it sounds like you are though, um, you know, I remember, do you remember that weekend, Keely, where we went to the office and you and I ordered pizza and we got, we hunkered down for the whole weekend and we built these checklists out and it's not necessarily the same checklist that we have now, but we were like, we got to start somewhere because what happened is we had a TC that we hired that had everything up in here. And then we wanted to go hire somebody else. And when that person came in, we had a TC literally just walk out on us. Like Mm -hmm. she just one day walked out the door. We were like on the camera going, wait, she just walked out. (laughs) And And, um, never came back. And we, we didn't really have our stuff. We didn't know. We didn't really know what was going on with stuff. I mean, it was choppy and that's okay. Choppy is okay. But then um, Keely and I said, you know what, let's spend this weekend and let's put this together. And we started hammering out some checklists together from there. Then we gave it, well, Keely, you can speak on it. Cause I, I don't really know exactly. Didn't we give it over to Susie or what happened from there? Yeah, I think it was evolving after that. I went over it with Susie. A lot of the checklists of like what needed to be done came from, it was inspired already by Susie's process because she had trained me when I attempted to TC. And so I had an idea of how things worked and I, my brain works a little bit differently. So it was really helpful to go in with Siri and like dive into each of those steps and be like, okay, this step doesn't make sense here, or this step can be skipped we can combine these and we can consolidate this process. So it's evolving, but it is, um, you just have to start somewhere and it will always be changing. It's never going to be perfect. Yeah. It was grindy. I'll tell you, it was a grindy weekend, but we had fun Keely, but it was for me, I, I had agent brain going like, this is how the flow should be, but it was a, it was a lot of work for me. Missy, um, do you remember how many tasks there are? Like just to give an example, like on our, we did this once too. Same story. We don't need it, but like not the same. I had some assistants that were one came to work drunk every day. Whatever. Like <laughs> I am I, I couldn't fire her. her because you know what? I tried to fire her and that's like not a problem. They, I called the Minnesota department and they're just like, well, if she's trying her best, I'm like, are you kidding me? You can't hire <laughs> someone for coming to work intoxicated? No, you can't. You're struggling. <laughs> There's a side note. 
But, oh, sorry, noted. <laughs> noted. <laughs> noted. <laughs> noted. <laughs> drinking in your interview questions. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremiah weed is what she loved to drink every day. So oh, we we've had worse. I won't go there, but we've had worse. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> do you remember Jill? I think it was probably back in the, like back when I started when I was a TC. I would say maybe around twenty five tasks for each of his like somewhere 20 to 30 tasks for every transaction we definitely have ours pretty broken out that if somebody is gone and somebody else can jump in that they know exactly where they're at um and ours is now digital as well but with each task kind of even has a description of like what you need to do so that like if you don't know you can click and say like this is the steps i need to take to do this so if somebody's covering watching and maybe somebody who's out you forgot it was 60 some tasks. I think it was 60. Was it? Yeah. Because we had it like every, I wanted it dummy proof because I had dummies working for me at that time. So it was like dummy proof. And then it was like, um, when Jill came on, it was like, this is really annoying. Like every day I have to check through like a hundred things. Like it's like send email, click here. Right. So I think that's where it got into the descriptions and down to 25, 30, but it's nothing magic. It's Yeah. <laughs> We've got stories, we've got battle, battle stories, guys. Yeah. And I think when I started, we were on a different program, but it was basically like a digital checklist. I mean, it didn't do anything other than launch task set for um, the transaction. And then it was just check boxes. You just checked yeah. them off. Yeah. I, I feel like I added um, chime. Have you, I, what is it called now? Not chime. Loomly? Lofty. 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 Oh, can't keep up. They just changed it one day. <laughs> I, um, but it was like, I had, it helped me learn like the checklist helps, but now it's at a point that like, I don't even use it. Cause I couldn't figure out like the automation part of it. And I have the checklist in my head, but I'm like, this is not working. So it's trying yeah. maybe just not right. the best option for TC trickles. The TC thing is the toughest thing. I mean, to, because right. You guys like, that's why I think most of us end up building them out in some system is because, um, there just isn't, I mean, it's state specific, it's city specific. And it just is like, there's not a software program out there that you can buy that has these nifty little checklists and automations that you can do. So Good it's been a struggle. Yeah, yeah. maybe <laughs> the next couple of years, we'll come up with some. Mm -hmm. So just to keep us on pace, it looks like um, we should probably start wrapping up because I know they want us off a few minutes early. Um, you guys have any other questions? Just make sure you guys feel free to reach out to us. Um, I don't know. Well, do, Joanne, we have do any have one, Did you have one, Joanne? Quick, Joanne, are you good? No, All right. Good. Um, I was just gonna say thank you for putting it together. Even though I don't have any questions today, it's really helped me, um, know that uh, I'm on track for something, right. and it's just gonna happen. And it just takes time. And it's, um, I think one of the things that kind of resonated with me is rather than saying there's a fifty percent split team team split is like there's a team split of, split of 25%. And if I give you a referral, it's another 25 so that it's not that 50% doesn't sound so harsh because truly you could give that referral to anybody. It doesn't have to go to somebody on your team, but that is the perk is that we have them available. But I think mm -hmm. instead of just saying it's a 50% split, it's just an additional 25 mm -hmm. seems to go over a little better with the wording, but I just wanted to thank everyone here for your time and um, it's nice to be with people from real and kind of find um, people that I resonate with as well. So I appreciate it a ton. Oh, oh you. you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, awesome. Well, you guys, um, thank you for joining. And just here, you, if you need to connect with us, <clears throat> you know where to find us. Here's our information. Um, just a reminder, <clears throat> it's next week, right? I think next week is the yeah, first. Yeah, because now it goes boom, boom. It's like one, four go together. Yeah. One. Yep. So we're basically on the end of the, the first of the month and then the end of the month. And so next month, we are going to be going over what do you provide? And this is going to be a lot of fun. So we're going to dive deep again into what do we offer on the back end? What are some of these? I know we went over some of these systems but we're going to go deeper in what do we provide system wise? What do we provide culture wise? Like what really, this is the heartbeat of what, what we give out to our team. So that's going to be next week. It'll be fun. And, um, and then we have a guest that's coming on <clears throat> the end of the month and <clears throat> it's another team and they're going to share <clears throat> their operations and things like that. So we're going to get rolling 
and getting some other teams out there to show us behind the scenes. So just make sure you guys keep popping on and we'll continue to provide value. Um, so with that, we'll see you all next week. And you guys have an awesome day. Thank you yeah. for joining. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Hey. <laughs> yeah.